Hello everyone, Do It Right Tech coming at you with another YouTube video, and today we're going to be upgrading our legendary 2012 Mac Mini with some new thermal paste. So this is going to be a how-to video on how you can change out the thermal paste and hopefully get this little thing a little bit more cool. So let's jump into the video. All right, so first you're going to want to flip your Mac Mini over, of course, so that way we can see this nice little black shield here. As you can see, you just put your thumbs in here, and you'll see a little dot right here at the top, and there's a little dot there. You're going to want to twist it uh, counterclockwise, so that way, twist it like that, and then you want to put your finger chips under there and pull up, and there you go. So now we have the innards here. So you wanna make sure you're statically discharged. You can either wear a wristband or anything, or just touch something metal that's grounded, like your table leg or something like that. So that way you do not damage the components inside. Of course, make sure it's all unplugged and all uh, free of any things like this. So as you can see, now we have the innards. You're gonna first want to remove our RAM. So first, just pop those little things out and then pull straight out. So like that. So be careful with that. You don't want to damage them. They're pretty uh, small and you want to be very careful with those RAM stick modules. The back one's going to be a little bit more difficult. You're going to again want to grab those little ears and let it pop out like that and then pull out. You might have to wiggle it and then pull out this way. So not up, but out, or else you'll break these little things. And trust me, if you break those, you break the board. <laughs> so next, we're going to have these screws up here for this uh, Wi-Fi chip up here. So for me, I'm using the iFixit kit here. They're just a little basic kit here, but it comes with a lot of stuff. So I'm by no means sponsored by them, but this is basically what I'm using. It comes with all the good stuff that you want. Tweezers, uh, spudger screws with a ton of other different screws. So first of all, we're gonna want to get these screws undone. All right, so now we're going to want to use our TR6 Torx screw. So it looks something like that, if you can even see it. Uh, I'll get you a better thing because this cannot show it. But anyways, you're gonna wanna use the T six Torx screw. It's a special screw by Apple. And you're gonna wanna undo these two little screws here and just unscrew them very nicely. They just unscrew them very nicely. And then once it's loose, just gonna wanna pull up and there you go. That's your fan screw right there. So you can see it, that's a fan screw. I'm just gonna pop that in a little separate thing so that way we don't lose it. Same applies here. You simply just want to undo it like that. And then this is basically your screw uh, fan mount bracket screw thing. So as you can see, once you do that, this screw doesn't want to get undone. Here, come on. There we go. And then there's one on the bottom here that you want to make sure you do or else you, if you don't do it all the way, you'll pull up and end up bending that little thing down there, which you can see right there where I'm doing. So like so, you can pull up. And now don't pull up all the way because as you can see, there's that little connector right there. So you'll wanna be very, very careful. Just let go of the fan right there. And then next, we're going to want to pull that fan mount off. So the first thing is you want to gently grab the wire, as you can see right here, grab the wire all at once, and then gently pull straight up. So. You want to pull straight up like that. As you can see, it's out and we didn't break anything. So we can put the fan aside. It's already got the screws undone and voila. So we have those screws undone. As you can see, uh, everything's in place. We didn't rip out anything. So do not pry at the socket. You can damage it right there. Don't lift. Uh, out because as you can see there, gotta try to zoom in here, but if you can see there's a little teeth right there that come actually in and squeeze in. So if you're pulling out, you can risk damaging the logic board or the motherboard as, 
Apple likes to say logic board. <laughs> so once you do that, you're going to want to, of course, we remove the RAM. And the next, we're going to be wanting to remove the cowling. So that's around the heat sink area right here. There's this little piece right here, which we're going to be removing. It's going to be right down in that hole. So as you can see right here, it takes the same T6 Torx screw. Again, just line it up right there. And I don't know if we're focusing in, but right there, just undo that. Yeah, it may take a little bit of tightening or loosening. And there you go. Once it's done, just carefully grab it out and set it aside. Don't lose those screws because they are important. Now we can lift out the cowl and it should just pop out. So in theory, I'm getting there. <laughs> this is very limited room, but you should just be able to lift it up like that. And as you can see, you're pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, just very gently. You don't want to bend any of this metal. Come on, there. All right, so now we got the cowl out. As you can see, this isn't even actually metal. This is plastic, plastic. So what I like to do to keep track of my stuff is just put the screw inside where it goes like that. So that way I don't lose stuff and it remains all swell. I'd recommend that you know some prior uh, stuff before doing your Mac Mini. You know what you're doing and you're not worried. So next we're gonna remove the antenna plate. Again, this takes a different screw actually. This is going to take two of the T8 torque screws as you can see, which I'm grabbing out of our nice iFixit kit. There we go. So here we are. And as you can see, it just fits right in there. And we'll undo them. They're different ones. There's four of them. So as you can see, got one out. Let's focus in here. I don't know if I was unfocused for a long time, but we'll be focused back in. And like that. And then this is going to be a thorough one. I'm not going to do a lot of cuts because I want to make sure that you guys know what to do. And I'm going to even show assembly. I'm not going to uh, reassembly. I'm not going to say, you know, Oh, do uh, reverse for, what's it called? <laughs> reverse for assembly. You know, I think that's just sort of cheap. You don't follow your rules. Uh, it just makes everything nice and slow. So I'm just gonna have some nice commentary as we go along here. I'm gonna try to do very little cuts. So it's gonna be a little bit of a long video. This is gonna be what you expect from it. So once you remove those screws, you can gently pull the antenna plate up here which might be difficult, but you're going to slightly lift the antenna plate up and pull. Now it can be a little bit daunting there, as you can see, but as you can see, we did it. Now, if you can tell here, there is, let's zoom in, and I'm going to get my camera a bit fixed up there. Okay, so now, as you can see, we have, let's get our spudger out, a little piece right there, which we need to pull up, so that way we can get our Wi-Fi antenna plate out of there. So the hard drive can be in the way here, so it can be sometimes a bit difficult to pry out, especially if you have multiple drives in, which I do. So you're going to want to use the tip of it to gently pry it from its socket. So I'm trying to move this out of the way so that way we don't have any issues here. So it's difficult to see which is what, but there is the antenna plate. Okay, almost there, almost there. I don't want to break this. <laughs> because this is an important piece. And almost there, almost there. You gotta be very careful with this stuff. Um, you do not wanna break your antenna unless you have ethernet, but you know, um, <laughs> sort of important. And it's difficult to see from the camera and there. Okay, whew, we got it. That's a bit funny, <laughs> funky I should say, but 
we got it. There we go. Okay, so now it's out. You can see this is like a little micro piece there. So, whew, got that out. Again, I recommend you uh, make sure you know what you're doing before you do this. So now, there we go. So now you can see we got a little bit of dust here. Under here is where the hard drive is. So once we've removed it, now our job is to remove our logic board plug, which is right there. As you can see, you can just use a spudger again right here to gently just pry up on the logic board. And there we go. And also for me, I have dual hard drive scenario right here. So you can pull up your dual hard drive as well if you have dual hard drives. I did the hard drive kit from iFixit, so that's why I have that. Uh, if you just have a standard, that won't be occupied there. So now step, our next step will be, we'll be lifting the IR sensor out, which is that little guy right there. If you can see, um, zoom in here. There we go. So again, we're not going to be pulling it up because it's sort of, you know, stuck in there. But if we can, there we go, get a tip of a spudger and pull it straight up like we did with that previous one right there. So pull straight up, as you can see, it's now completely free. All right, so next we're going to be removing this screw here. Again, it takes the T10 screw. So just unscrew that from the chassis, chassis there or whatever. <laughs> and there you go. I like to just set this screw down here because you can't really want to forget it. And you just want to keep track of all your screws so that way you don't lose them. That's probably the number one thing you want to do. And the next one is a T6 screw right down there. So now right there on the main board. So now we're going to switch to a T6 here yeah, from our T8. So there is the T6 and simply twist and it should come right off. Boom. All right. So now just pull straight out. It's pretty big um, like that. And now, as you can see, our board is pretty much good. There's a couple other things that we'll need to do, but now we'll just be able to pull this straight out. Now, I do have a tool for this, which I'm going to show you right now. All right, so this tool is a pretty cool tool. It just looks like a big rod. You can basically use probably, I guess, some heavy duty paper clips if you want to do this on the cheap side. But basically what this does is because now we're ready to remove the main board, the logic board. Uh, you can buy it off of I fix it for five bucks, but you know, you can just make it or whatever. So as you can see here, there's two holes right down here next to this heat sink right here. You just gonna wanna gently push and align them in and they'll just sink in. You don't even need to push in uh, if I can see. There we go. Okay, so then like that. And now all you want to do is you're gonna gently want to pull towards you if you have your IO board like that. So, You'll want to pull, 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 keep pulling. And now our IO board is now showing, as you can see there. You can start to pull it out this way. So now once the IO board is visible, you can start pulling this way. And I'd recommend you taking your tool out here so that way it doesn't become lodged in there because it will become lodged. And now here's the stressful part about gently removing the whole assembly from the chassis. And as you can see, we have successfully got our IO board out of there. And now, as you can see, we got some wires and fun stuff that we get to finagle around with. So as you can see, there's a hard drive wire right there. And I think that looks about it for everything else that's being held in place. So now we're going to want to pull enough so that way we can get around there. So then we're going to gently want to pull this 
cable out if I can find a good place to grab it. This is our hard drive. It's actually not our hard drive. It's our power, DC power brick cable, which is going to be fun to put back in. <laughs> but voila, now we have a completely bare bones Mac Mini. And I just dropped a screw, but that's not important because I'll go find it again. So now we have this, and as you can see, Here's everything. This is also where you can replace your CMOS battery, everything. So now you'll want to be very careful with this. And you can actually move your Mac Mini shell out of the way. You're done with using that. And just set that on something nice where it's not going to get scratched up or anything. And now is the process of upgrading our thermal paste because we've gotten this far now all we need to do is get to our cpu so let's focus in <laughs> and get there all right so now it's time to remove our heat sink here so we're going to remove this screw right here at the top here if we have our io shield facing towards us we're going to remove that so we'll just set that there that belongs to the heat shield here and then next I mean, speaker here. This is a speaker, as you can see. It's sort of compress on it, <laughs> actually. So that's what you hear if you want to just use the internal speakers. So then next, we're going to focus on removing the heat sink. So there's a big, chunky T6 screw. Again, this is all with T6 torque screws. Um, and you'll just want to pull that one off. And there we go. So you can see, a very thick one. So we're getting closer to lifting this whole heat sink. And right under here is where our CPU lives. So next we're gonna remove this one right here, which takes a different screw, as I remembered. Don't wanna damage or strip them. They take T8 screws, so let's switch over to T8s. There we go. So many screws. I mean, you know, I don't know why Apple could have, you know, just set them as the way they are, but you know, you know, Apple, <laughs> they like to over engineer and um, over think things. And then this one right here at the bottom, there's, if you just follow my ways of doing this, everything should work out pretty easily. Now, as you can see here, you don't want to lose these springs at the end. Um, my camera will not focus. It is refusing to focus. <laughs> but anyways, if you can see, there's a little spring right at the end there. Um, there. There's a little spring right there as you can see, and you do not want to lose that. That's important for the mechanism to work and for this to actually fluctuate because as your CPU gets hot, believe it or not, <laughs> the metal will grow and contract and shrink and grow. And in order to do that, you have to have a little spring so that we can have some leeway. If it gets too tight, it will squeeze up. If it gets too loose, these will loosen up. So now, once you have that, you can start, I believe, prying up if I haven't messed up here. <laughs> Let's just double check. So we got them all removed. And now, in theory, we should be golden, except for that one T6 screw right there, which I did not see. They are so camouflaged, it is unbelievable. And I just dropped a screw with a spring on it, so. Do not lose your springs with screws, please. Keep those track of. So now we're gonna go back to our T6 again and undo this little baby guy right here. So let's undo him right there. Little baby guy right there. And slowly remove him. And I'll just set him right there. It All right, so after working and working, <laughs> I do have some success here. I did need to remove this shield right here. So it was actually laying right on top of this. This is sort of a bit mildly sticky, but it was laying on top of this and then this is folded over onto it. So I had to pull this off so that way I could have access to this T6 screw right here. 
All right, so I figured it out. I removed this right here. As you can see, this speaker was sort of sitting on top and this is grabbing stuff because it has a magnet on it. And then it also revealed underneath it, there's another screw. So it's basically this screw goes on here and then there's another T8 screw right under there. So it's a screw inside of a screw. So now it's just a matter of pulling gently everything, extremely gently and laying it come out. I've already gotten this, as you can see. I'd rate this probably mm, out of five being really, really difficult and one being like, you know, opening your computer and changing out the RAM on this thing. Um, probably I'd rate this about a four. It's pretty challenging if you don't know what you're doing. And you got all these screws, as you can see, just laying around here. Uh, so, I'm going to get back there and figure out why this isn't coming off, and then I'll tell you guys. And voila, I did free the heat sink. Sorry guys, you were right on it. Uh, I just actually was right on it. I just looked under there, and this part right here, this fan part, was because it's so old and this thing gets so hot. I'm damaging up the speaker there. <laughs> uh, it was so old and so hot that this, like, sort of... Uh, plastic shield with uh, a little bit of like, I'd say foam or something was stuck on here. I mean, this was stuck. So I actually had to go get the spudger and sort of just wiggle it and pull it off. And it was still really stuck. So I kept wiggling, kept pulling, and eventually it did pop off. So as you can see now, there's our thermal paste. I'm getting thermal paste on me and our thermal paste on there. So what I recommend for cleaning this is a nice little alcohol swab and basically make them shiny. So as you can see here, we just got CPU, I believe is this one right here. Don't quote me on it, but I believe it's this one. And then we have another, I think this is the chip set. If I'm correct, uh, someone help me on that one if I got it wrong, but I believe that one's a chip set. So let me go grab an uh, alcohol swab and get this cleaned up and that cleaned up. And then we'll apply some new thermal paste on this 2012 Mac Mini, which has 2012 thermal paste on it. And as you can see, it's quite bad there. So let's get going. All right, so I bought four alcohol swabs. Didn't bought them, bought, buy them, I brought them <laughs> in case that's not like them. So I'm gonna just open some up here and start cleaning. So again, as I said, this isn't really going to be cut. All the stuff that I was doing was just, you know, for stuff. But as you can see, sort of stuck on there. And I'm going to, you could even use a sponge. <clears throat> the spudger on this, sort of scrape it off. So that's what I'm going to do here. I should have a paper towel on this, but let's just do it right here for the fun of it, shall we? So, as you can see, it's so old, it's sort of lost its liquidness and it's just really pooping out. I mean, this is almost like clay, I'd say. So now we got the block nice and clean there. Uh, you wanna make sure that it's as shiny as possible. <laughs> And you know, at the same time, maybe grab an air compressor and blow this free of any dust. You should be able to see through like that. And now we're gonna set that aside and work on the actual chipsets. So here, you wanna be very careful again uh, with this. And this is just like clay. I mean, this is so thick and goopy. It's unbelievable. I am quite surprised, but there we go. Let's see here, do I have another, my sort of pasty block here? There we go. Yeah, another reason why a spudger is good is because number one, it's not gonna ruin stuff because it's plastic. Number two, it's not gonna ruin stuff because it's plastic. <laughs> and uh, it's not gonna scratch things, it's not gonna damage things. And you know, we're just gonna clean up this dye here. So I hope that we didn't kill the boards <laughs> because as you know, liquid and 
stuff do not go well with each other, but that's pretty clear. And um, I'd say that, that looks nice and good. Uh, okay, so now I really wish, you know what, I'm just gonna pull straight up on this boy and get him unplugged because I should have done that a long time ago for the speaker. You just pull up on the wire and get it out of the way because it's driving me insane. <laughs> All right, so that's looking good. Now we just gotta let that evaporate, which it's alcohol swab, it'll evaporate. Now I have some of this new stuff. It's rather than Arctic silver, it's Arctic MX4 thermal compound. So in theory, this lasts up to 12 years, or what did it say? Eight year durability, eight year durability. And basically by the time eight years is done, I think this isn't gonna be that good. I mean, I don't know who keeps a computer for longer than that. I mean, this thing's already eight years old. So considering that this is like top of the line stuff from Amazon I bought, this is Arctic silver, I mean, Arctic, which is really high quality stuff. Considering that this is saying eight years and the Apple stuff that they have on this has been already eight years, you can assume that you've lost quite a bit of performance and it was quite evitable. So here's a big, Chunky boy. They're quite generous with how much they give, which I'm quite happy. That's the contents of the box, as well as a little mixer here. There's no instructions, I don't think. It's pretty much the same. I think... Um, durability, no cutting, no curing, non-curing, non-bleeding. That's great and it does not need to be reapplied for eight years, which is really good. Uh, I don't think that there is anything special. I mean, I could have used this to, I think this is what it was for, to scrape off stuff uh, off the die. But um, let's just get to it. <laughs> I'm done waiting around. So as you can see, here's our nice Arctic. I haven't worked with this one before, but we're just going to basically put one little smidge right here. Be very careful with how we smidge it out. And little dot. There we go. That was probably too much, but oh yeah. Oh, good grief. That was probably too much, but that was my problem. Let's see if we can fix that up here. There. Okay, that's that's good. All right, I wasn't sure what I recorded there, but anyways, I just put the couple little dots there with the nice new thermal paste, and we're gonna put it on there. So basically a dot there and little two little baby dots right there. This is plenty, it'll squeeze out. Trust me, I know it looks small. You do not need a big gob. Just put it in there, and now, we're going to try to align this without smearing our thing up. So just gently squish it under there. And now let's make sure our holes are pretty lined up, which they are, and we're seated. Look at that. We are seated. We are looking dandy.
All right, the reason why I messed up was because I simply forgot to plug this little cable right here for power into our system. So that's sort of necessary, you know, if you want to turn your computer on. And it's probably one of the hardest plugs to get aligned in because it's right under there. You can't quite see what you're doing. And there's not a lot of slack for this. You can't exactly pull any harder and you don't want to damage anything. So it's just a matter of looking and aligning until you manage to get it aligned. I've actually got to push it in a little bit more. So that way I have a little bit of better clearance. I'm going to cut the video and I'll tell you when I get it in. All right, so I did manage to get it in. It just took a while. I used a spudger and sort of just pushed it in. It did manage to go in, and now we got to make sure that any of these cables here that need to get plugged in don't become shoved out. Now, in theory, we are golden. Just gently push this in. Nice cracking sounds are always nice. <laughs> And the chassis is all the way in to our thing. As you can see, this is nice and flush. Um, no problems there. Now it's just assembly the inside. First of all, you can attach our motherboard things right here. Uh, these ones are fun too. <laughs> but at least you have a little bit more room to work with. The antenna cable is going to be the fun one though. Uh, getting that lined up in there because there's so much junk, but let's see here, there, there we go, that one's in, now that one's in, you want to make sure that you push down on them, make sure that they stay, and then we also have this little thing, this little guy, I believe this is our RAM modules? No, no, no. I'm getting confused with something else. I don't know what that one is. Uh, power of some sort or hard drives. Mid make sense. So now we got all those plugged in. I'm just making sure that they're all seated and happy in there. We won't have any technicalities later on. Okay, so once we did that, we got that plugged in. Now we got this nice and good in. And now we can begin with screwing stuff in. So first of all, we're gonna put this T8 screw, which I need the T8 driver head for. I have a T6, go for a T8. There we go, let's push this up. T8 screw goes right in there at the bottom. There we go.
Okay, now all we're done is just slot this in. We got the fan installed. All we gotta do is push that in, make sure it's in place, and I think this is all seated. Let's see here. It doesn't look quite seated. <laughs> you gotta make sure the RAM is really seated or else you won't be getting your full RAM. You see that gold should be completely gone. It should, in theory, just go on, squish it in. Can be pretty, pretty medium rough with ram sticks if you can get them in. See, it wants to do that, but hmm, I'm just not convinced. The stick should be completely seated, not like that, like how it is. It should be in more, which it isn't, and I'm not liking that. So. Just double check here. Yeah, see? There. Oh yeah. Gotta make sure that the gold is all done. Now we're finished. We can literally just close this up. As you can see, wrong way. <laughs> and close this up. There we go. All nice and solid. Nothing shaking around. In fact, just to verify that it's working, we'll plug her into power and into a monitor. And three, two, one. And I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't. But here we are logging in. Got it all unplugged, all plugged back in, and it's all good. So if you want to find and just do this guide, we're all up and running, we're all good and dandy. Fans even running just to verify. I can hear it. So we're all good. Like and subscribe to the video and I'll see you in the next one.